Well, one of you guys on YouTube told me to get all this fire extinguisher dust off the motor. And it's been on there for two weeks, so let's get it off. That's crappy. Well, now that we can breathe, I've pulled out all the motor mounts. Just the bolts here. This one right here was actually quite difficult because of how the mount was shoved back and how the subframe was bent. The motor mount bolt is actually bent. That's pretty spectacular. I'm pretty impressed that that thing didn't shear off that it actually bent. So I'm pretty impressed with that bolt. I know it doesn't sound like much, but usually bolts break. They don't bend, especially motor mount bolts. But I pulled the transmission mount. I pulled the two side mounts. The only thing that's going to give me a problem is the exhaust because it's still on here to the point behind the subframe. Now for axles, the passenger axle is broken, so I'm not really concerned about that. The driver side axle, I just pulled it right out of the boot at the edge of the transmission, like the edge of the input shaft. So it's out of the way and dealt with. Oh, there she comes. And like I thought, the exhaust is giving us some troubles. So, I actually did forget the power steering hose right here, so we're going to cut that as well, and then we're going to cut the exhaust off. Yeah, we're just going to take a sawzall and cut that exhaust off. So with everything cut there, let's keep coming up. I'm leaking a little bit of power steering fluid, but I'm not overly upset about it. Now would you look at that, we got a little bit of progress going on. I just did cut the power steering main pressure line. I didn't have power steering in it before. It'd be kind of nice to have it back, but I'm not going to be greedy. Definitely not going to be greedy. I just want that car to run. That's the main reason I'm doing this. So with this out, I can kind of see where some of these vacuum lines go. I can kind of see some of the stuff that's broken off the back of this that will have to be changed. I can see my EGR valve. I can see a lot of this stuff that's broken that I don't even really want. So we're going to maybe even build a little bit of an EGR block off here as well. So that would be a little nice. Um, input shaft here looks great. Axle over here, not so great. But this is progress. What we can do with this now, is we can basically huck it in the garbage. I'm joking. We're going to take off the, uh, the steering rack, because it's always nice to have an extra steering rack. We're going to save uh, lower control arms, just so I have one extra set. I'm going to keep them in a different car outside. We're going to save spindles, brakes, that kind of stuff. So, I don't really even want to get rid of this right now, because I might have to use these motor mounts in that car because I don't know if the back motor mounts are the same I haven't done a lot of research into this yet so we're still kind of feeling this out right now
Well, let's get this down and onto a cart. We just threw a tire underneath there to try to balance it out a bit. We're going to try to come down as slow as we can. And this is not a rocket appliances here, boys and girls. This is just setting the load down. Nice and easy. Keep it at a nice calm pace. Try to square your load. And then just touch down. That looks like a Super Bowl pass right there, boys and girls. Well, today it's pretty damn cold. We woke up today to this. Oh my goodness. What's with all this white junk? It's everywhere. It's only early November. Why are you here already? Go away. Go away. So that is perfect reason to shut the door. Start a good old fashioned fire. Oh yeah, that's a nice fire. And get going on the derby cars. So today what we want to do is we want to get this motor, this suspension, this subframe out of the car. It's pretty much ready. Maybe we might take all the leaves off the car and throw it in the fire just to keep the fire going. Holy, it's chilly in here today. I think it was minus 16 this morning. I couldn't believe it. So let's get going, guys. Let's get going. So the motor came out pretty easily, but it's... The problem was is that this timing belt tensioner right here, the bolt was stripped. So I think when you gave it fuel, it kind of jump a tooth. And when you let off, or jump a tooth back. It kind of jump teeth, I think, where it pleased. And I was just having a hard time. Um, so we're just going to throw this motor out. I've had enough of this motor. It's junk. Sorry about all the smoke, I was doing a little bit of welding to the car and I guess I caught some grease on fire, but bear with me. What we're going to do now is we're going to pull this motor and we're going to put it on the ground. Uh, while it's up, I'm probably going to remove the back motor mount so that way I can save the axle assembly. Um, I'm pretty sure that I can use both of these axles in this transmission, I just have to use the inner axle for the passenger side and the reason why I want to use these axles is because this is an old body car and I have lots of old body cars in the backyard that are broken but the axles are still good so in retro retrospect if I use these axles then I have spare parts now these newer ones I have one for parts so Three for parts, one for parts. I'm going to go for three. So what we're going to do is we're going to try to pop out the axles, undo the motor mounts, lift it up, undo the back motor mount from the block, so that way we can use the passenger side inner axle. And I think that's it. Let's go with this. And I think that's it. So let's get her done. And I think that's it, so let's get at her.
Here we are with the old subframe. And what we have there is a new motor. Now, we switched the front motor mount to the older style because I like the older motor mount on the front. And on the back, because we want to use the older axles, we actually switched the back motor mount to the old, older style as well. Uh, that's just for the axle itself going in. Um, now, I did put the newer style transmission bushing on that side, and that's mostly because the older, older transmission mount is actually garbage. It's actually all torn apart. So, I think we're just going to try to bring this thing, thing in and set it down. Uh, maybe I'll pop that axle out so I can slide this one in. And uh, Oh, we did do an EGR delete, and the main reason we did that is because it was all broken. So, I don't know if that's going to help us or hinder us, but it's done. Worst comes to worst, I put a different EGR system onto it. We turn all the vacuum lines to stock. But hopefully we won't have to do that. a lot better than what I envisioned it inside my head. All the motor mounts basically just fell right down like it was designed to be. So I don't think this uh, new motor and an old chassis is as hard as I thought it was going to be. But as it goes right now, I got to tighten down all the motor mounts. I got to reinstall the power steering lines. And that's about it. So I'm going to do that. Well, with all the motor mounts changed out and everything done that we need done to get this thing back in, now it's time to put this thing back in. We're just going to wheel it over and bring it down, but that's going to go on tomorrow's video. So today we got the motor switched out, we got the old one out, we got the new one back on the engine subframe, and we're about ready to put it back in. So thanks for watching very much guys, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Don't forget, if you got any derby pictures, videos, stories, comments, feel free, feel free to add me on Zach's workshop on Facebook, and post some photos, post some videos, it's all good. See you guys tomorrow. Just got to put this thing in here now. Hmm. Guess we don't need this. That's where the hammer is.